Sorry. National Lampoon's Animal House, a big hit on the big screen in 1978. It was the first, it was the humor magazine, rather's first try at movie making. For nearly 30 years, National Lampoon pushed the limits of good and even bad taste, skewering American politics, religion, and lifestyles. A new film, Drunk, Stoned, Brilliant Dead, the story of the National Lampoon chronicles its rise and eventual fall. You could walk into the Lampoon editorial office and get high just walking in. But as long as it stayed in the editorial office and as long as they were doing the terrific work they were doing, I, I didn't tell them what to do. We all do it the same way. You get drunk, you go home, you get up in the morning and you write the piece. <laughs> Douglas Tarola is the film's director and producer. Good morning and thanks for being with us. Thanks for having me. So where did it all start? I mean, I think like a lot of people my age, I came to the National Lampoon through Animal House. I saw Animal House probably at an age a little bit inappropriate by today's standards to go see it with my dad. We actually saw it twice in one day. He loved it so much. <laughs> and then I went out and found the magazine through the older brothers of Friends and you know, special editions that they had, and I just loved it. So the this, magazine came from uh, two Harvard Lampoon writers originally then? There, there's a thing called the Harvard Lampoon, and there were three students and two really writer uh, comics who then went to New York and pitched the idea of a national humor magazine, and that's how you got the National Lampoon. And I think they paid a residual to Harvard the entire time that they published the magazine. And, but that's how you get it. And these guys really, I mean, kind of, they set the stage for a big change in the landscape of American comedy, didn't they? I mean, I think when you look at comedy today and you look at someone like Judd Apatow or Amy Schumer and you see this combination of sort of bittersweet humor, like with some heart, but also things that just go, for some people, maybe a little too far, that all comes from National Lampoon. Mm -hmm. At the peak in the 70s, how big of a deal was it? I mean, National Lampoon, was a, a magazine that had a huge pass along. So if you think of like somebody has the magazine, they give it to people or someone takes it, I think that at their height, they sold a million issues a month and then 12 million people would read it. And that's why they had such huge advertising. In an era where there were so many magazines on the newsstand and you had to have these outrageous covers, um, they were somebody who had a lot of newsstand sales as well. And, and, and it shouldn't be surprising that John Belushi, Gilda Radner, Bill Murray, Chevy Chase, all got their start essentially through the Lampoon, didn't they? Well, what happened is, is that they had this magazine and all of a sudden they're like, let's do a stage show, yep. let's do a radio show, let's do a movie. And that's where you get these performers, many who came from Second City, and, that, and that's where you get them all, all the people that went to Saturday Night Live. Do you ever think it, this could make a comeback? I mean, we live in a world now where everyone kind of walks on eggshells. There's a political correctness we all, uh, to the most part, abide by. Could a magazine like this exist today? You know, I, I think it, it, it's politically, it's political correctness, but it's also almost like a self-censorship where people are just afraid. If I say this, you see with the politicians, you see in, in the election, this, you know, this cycle, you know, where people are afraid, like, what if I say this, what's the fallout going to be? Yeah. But I'm a movie fan, I'm a sports fan, so I want to believe that the National Lampoon could exist today. We want to believe too. Douglas Torola, thank you so much.